Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. For the next 30 minutes, you will travel back to a time when radio controlled the transmission and the mind created all your fears. Welcome to Classic Dark Radio. forces of the United Nations, we present one of America's top spine tinglers, a radio rebroadcast of a program dedicated to the mysterious, the unusual, and sometimes the supernatural, a program of Suspense. Two tickets. Two it is. Now listen, Tom, is this Two really six. necessary? Oh, what's the matter with you? You're scared? Come on. Well, I just don't like these things, that's all. I never have. Don't be silly. It's no worse than riding to a stick up in a prowl car. Yeah? Well, I never liked that either. Go on, go on, get in. Oh, no, not in the last seat. That's definitely out. Okay, okay, so we'll ride in the last seat the next time when you're over your stage fright. Uh, you'll ride in the last seat the next time. For me, this is strictly a one-shot proposition, and don't expect anything different. Safety belt, Mac. Everybody got their safety belt buckled? Okay, folks, you're up. Here we go. Tom, are we still alive? Well, can't you tell? All right, folks, who's going to ride again? Come on, what do you say, Benny? You want to try it again? Are you crazy? Come on, it'll do you good. Don't tell me. This thing is a menace to health and sanity. All right. Hey, what did I tell you? Look, there's a guy passed out back there. Hey, come on, come on, come on, snap out of it. Hey, come on, get up, mister. Hey, somebody give me a hand with this guy. Wait a minute, I'll help you. All right, you get his legs. I'll take his head. Come on. I don't know why guys ride this thing if they're going to pull a fade out. Uh-oh, this guy didn't pull any fade out. Yeah, well, he ain't exactly the guy for the party. Yeah, you're right there, pal. He's dead. He, he's what? He's dead. Holy gee. Wait a minute. I better call a boss. <laughs> All right, folks. You just have to step outside the gates, please. I'm sorry. There's been a little accident here. Now, go on. Everybody out, please. Everybody out. Hey, what's the matter, Johnny? A huh, guy passed out. The man there says he's dead. Oh, for every season, it's something. Please, folks, outside the gates. Yeah, please. All right. Please. Outside, outside the gates. Come back, everybody. Go ahead. What's the matter, Terry? That guy just died on us. Yeah? How come? I don't know. This man here looked him over. How do you know he's dead? You a doctor? No, officer, but it's not too hard to tell. Where is he? Well, he's back in the back seat. Come on, keep the mom outside, will you, Terry? Sure. Come on, break it up now. Break it up. Just the guy? That's him. Hmm. Looks like it must have been heart failure. Well, it doesn't look like heart failure to me. Say, who are you? 
Dwyer's the name, Tom Dwyer. Yeah? Well, uh... Hey! I never seen this dead guy. He never bought a ticket for me. That's right, he never had a ticket. You mean he wrote for free? How could he? He wrote for free, all right. Say, how come I... you know so much about this? Me? Oh, I'm just nosy. Hey, you. Uh, yeah? Do you remember seeing this man get on the car? Well, how do I know? They get on, they get off. I just wake here. Don't you remember that my friend and I were going to get in that last seat and then we didn't? Hey, that's right. Hey, who's this? Ben Duffy's a friend of mine. Yeah? Yeah. Now, listen. My friend and I were the last ones to get in that car. We were going to take the last seat and then we didn't. Then the car pulled out and when it pulled out, that last seat was empty. Hey, that's right, officer. That last seat was empty. This dead guy never even got on a car. Now you're getting someplace. All right, Dick Tracy, I'm listening. A roller coaster starts out from this platform all hunky-dory and rips around the tracks about 90 miles an hour. When it gets back here, there's a dead guy on it that wasn't on it when it got started. How do you think he got on there? Dropped out of the sky? Figure it out for yourself, pal. If he wasn't on the car when it started, then someplace along the line he was dumped on it. And guys who have been dumped are generally guys who have been murdered. <laughs> Murder is a rude and terrible customer, always. But seldom indeed has this unwelcome guest intruded more incongruously than on this particular evening when he chose to be the extra passenger on a roller coaster ride. Alan Ladd is our star of suspense in Robert L. Richards' story, The One-Way Ride to Nowhere. Hey, Tom, where you been? We're all supposed to be waiting in here for the chief of police. Making a phone call, that's all. Anybody I know? Jefferson Hotel, you know him? Huh? Hey, what's this all about? Oh, about $400,000 and a lot of people's lives. What? Uh-oh. Here comes the chief now. All right, quiet, everybody. Chief Haynes wants to say something to you. <clears throat> a man died under peculiar circumstances on the Ocean City roller coaster tonight. And all of you here were either on the car in which the body was found or in the immediate vicinity, like on the platform. Now, cause of death has not yet been determined, but all of you might be needed as witnesses, so we want to know where to get a hold of you. Have all these people been identified and left locations where they can be reached? Yes, sir. Well, then that's all. You can go now. Oh, uh, Chief Haynes. Well? I'd like to ask a couple of questions. Are these the two fellows you told me about, Johnson? Yes, sir. You're a pretty inquisitive young fellow, aren't you? Well, that's my business. Hey, by the way, Chief Haynes, haven't we met somewhere before? Not that I know of. What do you want to ask about? Well, for one thing, you said just now that the cause of death had not yet been determined. That's right. The man was blue in the face and apoplectic, but there were no marks of violence on the body. The coroner's working on it now. Well, maybe the coroner should look at the man's neck. At what? At his neck. Listen, you're no doctor, and neither am I. The coroner of this city knows his business. Okay, Haynes, okay. I just thought I might save him a little time. Well, you're wasting my time. If you think I'm going to give you an inside track so that you can go to this poor man's family with some sales talk that you can help him bring some kind of a legal action... Oh, he's that... got a family, has he? Yeah, he's got a family, and I'll get out of here. And his name is Richard Elliston Brighton, and he's the professor of psychology, and he comes from Chicago, huh? Right. So you went through his pockets before my men got there. Now, did I say that? Listen to me, young fellow. You know entirely too much about this case for your own good. You're from Chicago, too, aren't you? Mm-hmm, that's right. What are you doing here? On a vacation, visiting my friend here. Well, you better take a... Oh, hello, Doc. What about it? Uh, murder. He was strangled. Strangled? Yeah. We got a good look at him. We found a thin red mark around his neck. He was strangled with something like a picture wire. Now, isn't that a funny way for a middle-aged professor to be knocked off? It's a funny way for anybody to be knocked off. And isn't it a funny thing for a professor of psychology with a with a family and all to be way out here all alone, so far from home, hanging around an amusement park? That's no funnier than what you're doing, hanging around here. And that's quite a coincidence, by the way, Mr. Tom Dwyer of Chicago. Chicago's a big place, Chief Haynes. Lots of people live there. Say, uh, Chief, well, I think of it here is the stuff we took out of his pockets. Mm, nothing much. Wallet and a few things. Oh, oh dropped something there. Mm, I got Hand it. Hand that over, Dwyer. Well, 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 a souvenir postcard. Sheila Kennedy. Mm hmm Ocean City. And quite a cutie she is, too. I said hand it over. That's material evidence. Sure, sure. Here you are. One of the local tent girls, I take it? Know anything about her, Chief? Now, listen, Dwyer. I got enough on you already to hold you on suspicion. 
Take my advice and keep hey, your uh, nose out of it. Come on, Tom. This isn't doing you any good. Yeah, that's right, Ben. And anyway, uh, we got a date with a lady. <laughs> They're luscious, they're delightful, and they're daring. The most gorgeous girls, the most beautiful. Hey, Bud. Show me kind of the hey, world. Bud, can we go in now? Yeah, what'd she say? Hey, what's that? I said, can we go in now? Oh, oh, yeah, okay, fellas. Down there at the second door. I told her about you, and she says it's okay. Thanks. Make it snappy. She goes on in a couple of minutes. They're lovely, they're luscious, they're gorgeous. The most gorgeous girls in the world. The most beautiful men show in the world. Uh, room of her own. Sheila must be all right. Hey, I thought you said this was business. It is. Wait out here, will you, Ben? Oh, so when it's dames, I wait outside. I said this was business. Uh... Who is... I don't know you. Well, maybe we've both been missing something. How did you know I came from Chicago? You'd never have got in if you hadn't pulled back. That was a good guess, wasn't it? Well, I don't know you, and I don't want to know you. So beat it. Now, look, Sheila, I didn't come here to cause any trouble. My name's Tom Dwyer. Are you I... going to leave or do I call the bouncer? Sheila, a man was murdered in the amusement park tonight. Hmm, murdered? Well, hadn't you heard? Everybody has, but I didn't know it was... He was from Chicago, too. And Sheila, he, uh, he had your picture in his pocket. My picture? Mm-hmm, that's right. Oh, so what? Well, there must be 50,000 old goats. From one end of this country to the other with my picture in their pockets. They sell them at the show. Now, how did you know how old he was? I... I didn't... I, I was only... Professor Brighton didn't come around the last two or three days to talk to you about anything, did he, Sheila? No, I don't even know what you're talking about. you got no right to question me. You know what I think, Sheila? I don't know, and I don't care. I think you're in a tough spot. You'd like to be out of it, only you don't quite know how. Well, what if I am? Well, maybe I can help you. Nobody can help me. This is murder, Sheila. That's not so good. What's your angle in all this? I wouldn't kid you. I'm a private detective. I make my living in things like this. Aside from that, and as a general rule, I I just don't like murder. Listen, mister, what'd you say your name was? Dwyer, Tom, do you? All right. I don't know why, but you seem like a nice guy. I am. Wait till you get to know me better. Might have been nice at that, but keep out of this. For your own good, you'll get nothing but grief. Mm, what kind of grief? The worst kind there is. You saw what happened to the professor, the poor guy. Get out of the amusement park. Get out of Ocean City and stay out. Thanks, Sheila. Maybe you're right. I know I'm right. But I'm in kind of deep already. Uh, is there anything particular I should look out for? Come on, Sheila. You're on. Okay. Listen, Tom, just remember, that roller coaster isn't the only one-way ride to nowhere around here. One-way ride to nowhere. <laughs> What you mean by that? It's a tip-off, Ben. Maybe. One-way ride to nowhere. Yeah, that's what the professor got all right for free. But how? He was dumped on. I still say how. Now, well, that little problem doesn't bother me, but... Hey, listen, huh? Three men Did you hear on that? One way yeah. One way ride, ride to nowhere. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's around there to the right. Yeah. Bulletproof automobile. Huh? Where? Attention next to the rolling coast. Take it easy now. Okay, okay, but... Ben... Ben, you worry me sometimes. Did you know this thing was here? Well, it wasn't here last week. How am I supposed to know what you want? If you tell a guy something once in a while, you wouldn't... Oh, you never heard of Wires McGuire either. No? Skip it. Hey, wait a minute. That guy's going into his routine again. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Inside, you will see the actual bulletproof automobile in which the famous Jarvis gang sped from the scene of the $400,000 Springfield mail robbery. The most daring hold-up in modern times. Now, this is the very limousine in which they were pursued by 50 miles. Three of them died, and the fourth became a raving maniac on that last fatal one-way ride to nowhere. Step right in, ladies and gentlemen. A new show is about to begin. Benny. Benny, now I know I'm right. Hey, is this what you came down here for? Not exactly, but there's been some funny talk lately about this male robbery job. In some funny places. Well, I still don't get it. There were four guys in on that. Three of them dead, the others in the bug house. That kind of closes the books, don't it? I'll give you a little tip, Benny. They never found the money. And the insurance company's got a standing offer of 10% reward. 
40,000 bucks. It's right over, gents. The original bulletproof automobile. Okay, was... maybe we will have that. How much? Uh, two bits uh, apiece. Here you are. Step right inside, gentlemen. And now the car that you see before you... You don't have much is... business, do you? Uh, what are you, a couple of public accountants? No offense. It just seems too bad. It's a swell exhibit. Uh, you're telling me. Ah, these hicks down here, they don't appreciate nothing. Now, that must be pretty hard, judging what the public will go for. Yeah. I thought this murder automobile would be a sensation, something modern, you know. My brother found it in a junkyard in Indiana. Cops must have sold it at auction or something. Look, would you uh, really like to get rid of this heap? Like to? <laughs> don't worry, I already have. Yeah? Listen, brother, the minute I found out that I had a turkey, I went out and I found me a sucker, but quick. Well, how'd you find him? Well, uh, didn't exactly find him. He come by. He's making some sort of a collection of some cops museum, you know. Capone's bulletproof car, Dillinger's artillery, and I, I got my price, though. Well, well, well. Now, isn't that too bad, Benny? Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 it sure is. What's too bad about it? Well, to tell you the truth, we're making sort of a collection ourselves, you know, for a big New York exhibitor, and yeah. I thought, well, I thought maybe we could do a little business. Oh, I'm sorry, mister. I just closed the deal tonight. If you'd only come around just a couple hours soon, I could have done... suppose this, uh, this man you sold it to would be interested in reselling at the right price? Yeah, I don't know. It, it cost you plenty, though. Confidentially, he paid me a thousand bucks cash. Well, where could we find this guy? Well, he should be here any minute. He's going to pick up the papers and things. Uh, you want to come on in back away from there? I was just going to knock off anyway. Thanks. You know, I had a hunch maybe I should have held off. How's a guy supposed to know in this crazy business? Well, he, uh... Well, quite a cozy little place you got here. It's all right. Sit down, make yourself the home. Hey, what's that? Hmm? Oh, them roller coasters. The tunnel goes right under the floor here. It's enough to drive you nuts. Yeah, I can imagine. The door over there must open up right over where the tunnel comes out, huh? Well, I guess it does at that. I never looked. It's all nailed up. There used to be another wing on this building in the old days, wasn't there? That was the door to it. Yeah, there might have been. Yeah, I guess there was. Say, does this Mr., uh... uh the uh, guy uh, I sold the car to? McGuire. McGuire. Yeah, yeah, McGuire. Does he have sort of a business manager with him or anybody like that? Well, he's had a couple of guys with him once in a while. I really didn't pay no attention. I suppose he's been hanging around here fairly steady for the last few days, huh? Well, in and out, you know. You ought to be here anyway. Oh, well, here he is now. What's the matter? Ed, I don't... Uh, Mr. McGuire, we was just talking about you. Yeah? Who was? Well, me and these two gentlemen, they want to see you. Was this the maybe guy that came up? to see you, Sheila? I don't know. Sure I am, Sheila. Tell him. Well, I guess that's okay, him. Okay, you can run along to the hotel, Ed, honey. listen... Please don't. Do like I tell you. Harry, you stay here with me. Okay, Ed. Uh, I got all your papers and things, Mr. McGuire. Everything's here in this envelope. Thanks. And what did you two fellas want to see me about? Just a little business proposition. My name's Tom Dwyer, and this is Ben Duffy. Hi, Hi Mr. McGuire. Pleased to meet you. Uh, you can beat it now, Ferrara. We'll take care of everything. Okay. Well, so long. So long. Watch the door, Harry. Okay. Now, uh, what's your proposition? Well, I understand you bought Ferrara's car. That's right. You interested in uh, used cars? Some used cars. How interested? Enough to make an offer. Your uh, your friend here in on the deal? No, he just came along for the ride. Well, uh, I got a partner. At, uh, yeah? Well, where do we find him? We don't. He'd have to come here. We'd have to send somebody after him. Somebody like... Uh, like your friend. Okay. Now, listen, Tom, I... What's his name, and how does my friend find him? His name is Johnson. George Johnson's at 2854 Drexel Boulevard. Just tell him that I sent him. Uh, Tom, I, I... I don't think I ought to leave. Oh, take it easy, Benny. And while you're out, I wish you'd do something for me first. Huh? What? Uh, I want you to pick up my mail. It won't be out of your way. Pick up your mail? That's right. Do that first. I'm expecting a very important special delivery. Stop by the Jefferson Hotel where I'm staying and ask for a bellhop named... Ted Martin. He takes care of all of my stuff. The, the the Jefferson? Yeah, that's right. And be sure to see Ted Martin. He's the only one who can help you. So ask the clerk for him and I'll hurry back, will you? Ted Martin at the Jefferson. Well, oh, okay. You want me to go, Ed? No. You stay here. Okay. And now that he's out of the way, what do you know? Enough. You're a pretty bright boy, aren't you? You're going to talk? Why not? I know, for instance, why he bought that car. Uh, I think he knows too much. Let me handle this. Keep talking, bright boy. Well, after that Springfield mail job, nobody ever found the money. 400,000 bucks is a lot of lettuce, and you think it's somewhere in that car. Did you figure it all, all by yourself, or did you get a tip when you were in the federal pen along with Duke Jarvis? 
<laughs> well, well, you know any more cute answers, bright boy? Sure, I come from Chicago. I know that around there you got a nickname. They call you Wires. I told you you knew too much. Mm-hmm. On account, you got a reputation for being very handy, disposing of troublesome guys with a length of picture wire twisted around the neck. Have you any idea what you just talked yourself in for, bright boy? I know what I'll talk you in for if you don't play ball. Well, now, what do you think it is? I think we're wasting time, Ed. Listen, McGuire. I not only know how you killed Professor Brighton, I know why. Sure you do, bright boy. Sure you do. You think I'm kidding? Professor Brighton was a psychiatrist. He used to call him at the federal pen to examine guys who were wacky. They called him in to examine Duke Jarvis. Duke was the last of the Jarvis gang. The rest were all killed in the holdup. He was wacky, all right. So wacky that he let slip about the money being still hidden in the car. So when the professor heard about the car showing up, he thought he could make himself a piece of change. The poor guy, only you caught up with him first, right? You got it all figured out, ain't you? All but one thing, I... You see, I don't think you're smart enough to pull this all by yourself. Mm. I think you do have a partner. I tell you, we're wasting time, Ed. Oh, no, we're not. Now, listen, bright boy, who are you working for? What difference does that make, Ed? For Lenny. Don't you think I want to know who else is in on this? What do you say, bright boy? There's nobody. I'm working alone. Cover him, Harry. Okay. You better talk, bright boy. There's nothing to say. Who else knows about this? Nobody. <coughs> this ain't gonna do your face no good, bright boy. Talk! Go to... Talk! Watch him, Harry. I think he's coming out of it again. Ah, this ain't getting us no place. Suppose his pal comes back. He'll never come back. By the time he finds out, there ain't no such guy as George Johnson. Take a look, Harry. Okay. That's me. Hey, it's Chief Haynes, Ed. Okay. Open up. Hey, I thought I told... How did he get here? He walked in. He knows plenty. How much? The works. We've been trying to sweat out of him who he's working for. Haynes. I know where I've seen you before. The picture... You were guard at the federal pen when Jarvis and McGuire were there. Yeah, that's how you heard about the money. And when McGuire came down here, he, he had to play ball because you were chief of police here. <laughs> He's got to go, McGuire. Sure, I know. So we give him the business and dump him out of the side door there into the roller coaster like we did the prof. Are you crazy? You can't get away with two jobs like that the same night. So what do we do? Anything. Dump him in the bay. Make it look like an accident. Anything. Hey, that's an idea. And don't try to get fancy about it this time. But you just gave me quite an idea, Haynes. Quite a good idea. The fastest and the fanciest roller coaster ride in Ocean City. Keep that hat down over his face and hold him up straight. I got him. What seat do we want? What's the difference? The car's almost empty anyway. Get him in. Take the middle one. Keep that belt loose. Okay, everybody, you're off the fence. Here we go. Here we go. We're going in the tunnel now. Tie his hands and feet while we're in the dark. I'm doing it now. Got the sash weights on him? Yeah, they're on him. We're out now. Watch him. Hey, what was that? What's the difference? Hang on to him. We're starting up. We're coming to the top. You know what to do, Harry? Yeah. When we hit the bottom of the dip over the bay. Okay. I'll yell and we both heave together. We'll go down into that bay and sink okay, like a... Okay, McGuire, put up your hands. Both of you, put them up. Hey, what? Whoa, and keep them up all the way. <laughs> Ben, you made it. Hey, Tom, are, are, are you okay? Sure. What do you think you're doing here? This is a federal pinch, McGuire. I'm Ted Martin, Department of Justice. Staying at the Jefferson Hotel. Get it, McGuire? Hey, hey Tom, you, you ought to get to a dock. No, no, I got to get down to the police. Hey, Ted. Ted, listen, never yeah? mind. These guys get Haynes, chief of police. Uh, we got a couple of men down there already, Tom. When you phoned, I figured you might get mixed up with him. We've had our eye on the chief for quite a while. Well, I'll see you later. So long. Thanks, Ted. Oh, you were taking an awful chance, Tom, playing so cagey. I had to be sure. You know, if that dame hadn't stuck around and tipped us off, we just about made it when the car went through the tunnel. 
Oh, that, uh, that's Sheila Dame, huh? Mm-hmm. Say, uh, say, Ben, I, I think I got a date with a lady. Oh? So what do I do? Well, here's a dime advance out of your $20,000 reward. You go take a ride on the roller coaster. And so closes The One-Way Ride to Nowhere, starring Alan Ladd. Tonight's tale of Suspense. Suspense is rebroadcast for you men and women in the armed forces of the United Nations. In the brief time remaining in this broadcast period, we turn to our guest orchestra under the direction of Donald Voorhees. This rebroadcast is a presentation of the Armed Forces Radio Service.
thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed tonight's entertainment. Now, I caution you to subscribe before it's too late, before this broadcast ends, before we 